How you going there? I thought I'd make a video because I haven't made one in public for probably, I don't know, three weeks. You can see he's been in the wars again. He's got the cane of shame on. He's got a good boar, 131 pounds, which is big for around here. In fact, it's the biggest boar that I've caught my mate Simon probably in, I don't know, forever actually. We've never caught one that big. Old bits of my kitchen. Isn't that crazy? I'm cutting up the old kitchen to light the fire in the kitchen because the farmhouse has been rebuilt. Now, uh, apologies, I haven't made a, a video for quite a while. I've just been doing so much hunting and on that note, I've got some new hunting boots. Check those out. Xanderlands. I'll get closer. Look at that. Beauty. Hunting and fishing for Tony. Thanks, Peter. He organised those for me. They are really, really good boots. I'm still breaking them in. So if you've got a new pair of boots, wear them around the farm. Wear them when you're working. Wear them everywhere. So when you go and do your, your hunt, whatever it is, that it's going to be broken ink. So I'm going to light the fire and go inside and have a yak and tell you a little bit about what's happening. Because there's quite a lot to, that has happened since you've been here. And I'll also show you what's going on new around the farm here. Which is slowly taking place, shape what's been built in that. Currently I'm filming on the old Galaxy S20 because the S21 doesn't have the function where you can do pause, record, pause without the video and the audio being separate. The old phone is actually better for doing this. So I can hit the pause now and I'll see you inside where the fire will be going and I'll still make sense. I like this fire as much for Bruno as I do myself. There'll come a day when the dogs aren't allowed in here. That's when it's finished, but right now it's a place for them to keep warm and dry. Arb's got the bats up and the roof, all ready for a ceiling. Got the power in, got the vent for the rain shed down here. We've got the gas over here, got the plumbing, got the power. This is where my kitchen's going to go. It's going to be a square right out to here. It's gonna, the sink's going to be there, and she's going to go around there like that. It's going to be an island right in the middle. Should be good when she's finished. Let me bring you up to speed with what's been happening. So, three weeks ago, young Jody and I went in the scrub, an overnight mission, took all the dogs. After about oh, a day of climbing, just about, Pace ran off where we were off the spur, and he got onto a 50 pound boar, which he caught by himself. That was a good sign of things to come. The first bit of meat that I caught in a while, it was decent. Just moments after getting that there secured on me back, we got onto a decent boar. And that was Poe who caught that, and then the dogs got onto that. And it was a good boar. It was around 90 pound, scrappy, little tusks on it. Carried that back to our camp that night. And next morning we set off. Me with some meat in the pack, and young Jody's pack on my front. I carried his rifle as well. And he dragged a big out all the way back to the truck. That was a mission in itself. The next hunt, well, that was a next level one. That one there is the a video that's out now on the Patreon called From the Hills to the Shore to Battle the Boar and that's exactly what it was. We headed up for a two day mission. We knew there was a mark up there we'd found from the very first time that Jody and I had been up and got our two pigs. And I want to go back and see if we could find it and that's exactly what we did. As it turned out the pig had come down low. So we hit that low and we actually caught it and all well, the rest you have to read the story. The story's free, I'll post the, the link below for the story so you can read that take you straight to it and you can read the story and look at the photographs too. So that was a really, really good pig. It was 116.6 pound on the hook. It put up a good scrap. We were lucky no dogs were hurt because they had good tusks. I'll head back into the scrub with my mate Simon. Went for a poke around, nothing in the bush. Following day, went up with my son for quite a big mission into public land again and caught a nice 40 pound pig, which I boned out and kept the meat. Some of it was a bit dog because we got there a bit late, but took some meat home from that. Now the next hunt that came after that, and I haven't even started to edit it yet, make it into a video, that was with Simon and Spencer again. And it started off with Pace doing his magic again. He secured about a 50 pound sow. We dropped the guts out of that and poked it on Spencer's back. And then he took off and he got onto a really good boar. This one was 131 pound, a real dog killer, one with good tusks and he did battle, and currently that's why Pace and Poe both got the cone of shame on, and they are in stitches, but that was a big 
pig for Simon to carry out. I haven't done the video yet, but it will be coming out. I'll write a story up on that, and then I'll also post the video down the track. That's where we're at right now with what's been going on around here. Let me show you what's been going outside the farmhouse. I'll take you for a walk and just give you a quick view because I haven't showed you guys around what's been happening. I have been looking after young Spencer for about a year now. In the last few months, he's been staying four days with me, two days. Normally, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we go hunting, and then he stays with me the Monday, Tuesday, where he does work experience around the place. And as you can see, he's put shade cloth, which actually is frost cloth, not a shade cloth, over all my citrus around in here. He's been staying in the old house truck. That's our kitchen because we don't have a kitchen still. He's also been maintaining the garden next to the house truck and this is all his work here. We've got this beautiful garden. You can see I'm just taking the cauliflower as I need it. So we've got cauliflower, beetroot, kale, more kale, different types of kale, silver beet, and silver beet there. And we've got an egg going on here. And what's going on in the old farmhouse door behind it, this is the original door of the house. That's where our chickens are and that's where they're laying in here. This is their run, you can see a bit of corrugated plastic, the rain hits that and it goes down into that and that keeps their water going. There's also automatic feeder down there to supplement their feed. And out in the paddock, there's plenty of grass for them to go out into that. They have a little area they can keep away from the rain. That was from the 116 pound boar and they peck on that and get what they can out of it. My hunting has been so good that I just haven't had to kill any sheep. I kind of would like to because I'm getting a bit sick of eating wild pork and venison. It'd be nice to eat a bit of mutton, but we've got the freezer full. So these guys here, consequently, are still here. This little shed's finished, so I've got to place my boat now. I hired a rotary hoe and I put this garden in. And I'm going to plant probably some garlic in that. This is my raised bed here. And what I've got is coffee grounds, and I've also mixed all the stuff when I clean the chicken house every day. I take that out. And this hay, it doesn't actually sprout any seeds, so it's quite good to mix them with it. So it's mixed up with coffee grains and I'm ready to plant on that now. I want to show you my addiction. I'm addicted to growing wasabi. I love it. That's my wasabi there. Stu Driver gave me the first plant three years ago. And he's just recently sent me some more, which I've put in here. And this is all grown on my old wardrobe. So that's my wardrobe and I put corrugated iron around the outside of it. And filled it up with dead logs down the bottom, because... Wasabi loves dead logs. And then I put some stuff on top with some seaweed and different stuff. And you can see I've got some new ones. I've just put them in a couple of days ago. And they're doing really well. Wasabi is, I'm actually salivating talking about it. The wasabi is great in salad, the actual leaf. And of course, you take the bit below and you grind it up into a paste and it's really nice on, on your raw fish if you like your sashimi as I do. So a lot of things are recycled around here. You probably saw the strawberry bed I made earlier from the, the house, that's the old guttering, and it's been really, really productive. Piping, it's the old sewage pipe that came out when we replaced it, and I cut it in half, and now I've got watercress growing on that. I've also got some native, this here is a native plant. Does anybody recognize what that is? It's native to New Zealand. It's actually a native spinach. It's not doing so well. Here's some more here. That is a native spinach. First time I've grown it. And we've also got all of our own plants that we've grown in these muscle boys. We're propagating them in the glass house that Craig so gracefully gifted me. Here's our glass house over here. And this has actually been a godsend. It's been a godsend for many people, not just us, because all the guests that come to the old farmhouse get all the fresh produce, which is on both sides, chilies. Got some seedlings growing down there, broccoli. So we're seeding in here, then we plant outside. Go tomatoes on the side. There's some beautiful chilies. I'll show you the chilies I planted, and they're really, really nice. I've just uh, never grown chili before in my life. Look at these guys. This came from Haiti. Haiti gave me this plant. She gave it to me a year ago, and it's just producing so many. Really, really nice. We've got more strawberries growing in here as well, and it's just great to have a space. It's its own little world in itself that you can grow these plants that don't grow normally in winter, but keep on growing here. I love it. I can thank COVID-19 for this. I never would have had a garden if it wasn't for COVID. It's something that's good. Ross Johnson, the knife maker, he got young Mikhail to prune this tree during COVID. And look at the fruit that it's producing. Look at it. It's just absolutely abundant. Just because of that pruning. Now these are the things that I don't know about because I'm not a gardener. 
I'm good at killing stuff, but I'm not very good at growing stuff. But having said that though, William sent me an incubator, and we got one duck for the last one. There it goes. Yeah, there's Solo. She's been hand reared. It only grew one duck in the incubator. The rest didn't hatch out. We're having some problems with something not going quite right. Whether the drake's not doing his job and he's not rooting all the uh, female ducks properly or they're just getting too old, I don't know. Let's have a look at Poe. She has the cone of shame on. She's not doing much right now. We're just keeping her as still as we can because she's got a rip on her shoulder on this side here and it's a moving place. So it's healing up good. She's on antibiotics and she's also on anti inflammatories. Bugsy hunted yesterday, didn't you mate? As did B, so they're resting up. That's why we've got them in the cage today. They have had a walk this morning, but they need their rest. They had a massive day yesterday. I want to show you another garden we're putting in over here, and I've been taking the advice of you guys. That's it there. So we cut that out, and the rotary hoe went over that. Spencer rotary hoed it, and I put the edge in. And what I've got is down here, is I've got a bit of old carpet I've put over it, because uh, some of my patrons said this is how you deal with the weeds, you don't have to spray it. So this is an old bit of carpet I found, it's pretty much stuff, but good to stop the photosynthesis going on so the plants will die. The only question I've got to any of you people out there that know about gardening and stuff is how the hell do you get rid of twitch? Twitch is like from hell, this plant here, it's just, it just everywhere and it goes through everything. Like you cut up the rotary hoe and every little tiny bit then grows new twitch again. So the only thing I can think of is that you've got to like just keep on going and turning it over and taking it out. So we've had some apple trees knocked down over there and my son, he got stuck in the chainsaw. We've got a little bit of firewood there. That'll be for next winter. We need a bit more, but it's a, it's a slow job because it's only very small bits. That was a very, very short look at what's been going on around here. Thank you very much for your support. Hope your own adventures are going well. You're all having a good time. If you want to watch any of those hunting videos, just jump on my Patreon. It's for as little of the price of buying me a pack of potato chips for a whole month's viewing. And there's some bloody good viewing in there. So jump on that. I'll put a link below for that. Be good. Can't be good. Be careful. And we'll see you in the next one. See you later. We're going to try to get in there. Let me get Bruno Pat. You're just jealous. Well, you go, Pace. Good dog, Bruno. You're a good boy. Good dog. You're getting pretty hot there, son. Nice boy. Beauty, isn't it? Mm.